Hey there, it's Kenny. Today's video is all about a fascinating historical mystery. Did Emperor Taizong murder his brother, Emperor Taizhou? There are plenty of theories and rumors surrounding this topic, but what's the truth? Join me as we explore the evidence and try to piece together what really happened all those centuries ago. So sit back, relax, and get ready to dive into this juicy piece of Chinese history. In the year 976, the first emperor of the Song Dynasty, Emperor Taizhou, suddenly died in his palace, leaving behind a mystery that has puzzled historians for over a thousand years. While the official record of his death is sparse and vague, rumors of foul play began to circulate immediately after his death. Many people speculated that his younger brother, Prince Jin, later Emperor Taizong, had something to do with his death. According to the legend of Candle Shadow and Axe Sound, Emperor Taizhou had invited his brother to drink with him in his palace and then dismissed all attendants and servants. Later that night, witnesses claimed to have seen Emperor Taizhong acting strangely under the flickering light of the candle. Emperor Taizhou then took out an axe and started to poke at the snow on the ground, saying do it well. Hours later, Emperor Taizhou died suddenly, and Emperor Taizhong took the throne instead of Emperor Taizhou's two adult sons. Historians have debated the cause of Emperor Taizhou's death for centuries, but the truth may never be known. However, it is clear that the circumstances surrounding his death were suspicious. It is unusual for an emperor to die suddenly without any medical attention or official record of his illness. Additionally, the fact that Emperor Taizhou's sons were passed over in the line of succession in favor of his brother raises further questions. It is worth noting that the legend of Candle Shadow and Axe Sound was first recorded by a Buddhist monk named Chi Wenyin who based his account on rumors he had heard in the imperial court. Later, a historian included this account in his writings, although he altered some of the details to make the story more plausible. Despite the lack of concrete evidence, many historians believe that Emperor Taizhou was indeed murdered by his brother. Emperor Taizhong had a motive to kill Emperor Taizhou because he wanted to become emperor himself, and he had the opportunity to do so given that he was alone with Emperor Taizhou at the time of his death. Furthermore, the fact that Emperor Taizhou's sons were not considered for the throne suggests that there may have been a power struggle within the imperial family. The legend of Candle Shadow and Axe Sound has been circulating for centuries, suggesting that Emperor Taizhou was murdered by his younger brother with a jade axe. However, many scholars have come forward to challenge this theory, arguing that the legend is not reliable. One reason for this skepticism is that the jade axes used as literary tools during the Song Dynasty were not lethal weapons. They were made of crystal or copper and were not designed to be used as weapons. Even if Emperor Taizhou was struck with a jade axe, it would have left visible wounds that could not be hidden from others. Moreover, many scholars have argued that the jade axes used in the imperial court were purely decorative and had no practical use. They were used by the emperor and his officials to show off their wealth and status, but they were not used to carry out executions or assassinations. In fact, after Emperor Taizhou's death, his body was examined by his officials, including his wife and sons, and there were no visible signs of injury. The body had been washed and cleaned, but there were no signs of a violent death. Therefore, while it is true that Emperor Taizhou's death remains a mystery, the theory that he was killed with a jade axe is not credible. It is more likely that he died of other causes, as was common for people of his age and stature in that era. The evidence suggests that Emperor Taizhou was not killed with a jade axe, and the idea that he was murdered in such a dramatic fashion is likely just a fanciful tale. Emperor Taizhou's death is shrouded in mystery. He was having a good time drinking with his brother just a few hours before his sudden death. So how did he die? There are many other theories, and two of the most popular ones are alcohol poisoning and sudden stroke due to a genetic predisposition. However, these theories lack strong evidence. Although Emperor Taizhou enjoyed drinking, he was known to be quite moderate in his alcohol consumption. He even warned his servants against indulging too much in drinking. Besides, there are no records of him being ill or calling for medical attention in the months leading up to his death. 
Some historians also look through the records of his daily activities in an official document that was not tampered with by his younger brother. They found no evidence of any illness or medical issues. In fact, Emperor Taijo was in good health and spirits until the day he died. He went on a trip to Lokyong in March of his last year and witnessed a military exercise just days before his death. Therefore, the theory that he died from a sudden heart attack or stroke is also questionable. There is a long-standing rumor that Emperor Taijo was killed by his own brother, Emperor Taijong. There is no concrete evidence to prove that Emperor Taijong poisoned his brother, but there are some suspicious circumstances surrounding his rise to power. According to historical records, Emperor Taijong was known to be fond of using poison to eliminate his enemies. After defeating the kingdoms of later Shu, Southern Tang, and Wu Yu, he poisoned their rulers to secure his position as the ruler of the Song Dynasty. But let's fast forward to the night of Emperor Taijo's death. His son, Zhao Defong, was quickly informed of his father's passing by the Empress and ordered to enter the palace. However, instead of going straight to the palace, the messenger, Wang Jian, went to Emperor Taizong's residence. There, he met with a doctor named Cheng Diyuan, who was known for his medical skills and possibly also his ability to concoct poisons. Together, they rushed to the palace and met with Emperor Taizong who was initially hesitant to enter the palace. However, Wang Jian urged him to act quickly, indicating that there were other potential heirs to the throne, such as Emperor Taizhou's other sons and his brother, Zhao Tingmei. Finally, Emperor Taizhong agreed to enter the palace and seize power with the help of Cheng Diyuan and Wang Jian. Historian Shi Ma Guang, who wrote the Ji Ji Tong Zeng, later recorded these events in his book. Shi Ma Guang was a master historian and a loyal subject of the Sung Dynasty, so he was careful with his words when describing these events. However, he did provide some intriguing details that suggest Emperor Taizong may have been involved in his brother's death. For example, Cheng Diyuan's behavior is highly suspicious. He was a simple doctor, but he seemed to have insider knowledge of the situation and was waiting for Wang Jian outside Emperor Taizong's residence. He also accompanied Emperor Taizong to the palace and was involved in the power grab. Furthermore, Emperor Taizong's quick rise to power suggests that he had already planned his brother's death and had the necessary support to seize the throne. He rewarded his supporters generously, including Qing Diyuan, who was promoted to a high-ranking position despite his reputation for corruption. Overall, while there is no direct evidence to prove that Emperor Taizong poisoned his brother, the circumstances surrounding Emperor Taizhou's death and Emperor Taizong's rise to power are highly suspicious. Historians like Shi Ma Guang have left tantalizing clues that suggest there may have been foul play involved. Once Emperor Taizong seized the throne, he immediately launched a series of campaigns to eliminate anyone who posed a threat to his reign. In the Qin Bridge Mutiny, Emperor Taizhou was proclaimed emperor by his old friends after they rebelled against the government. When Emperor Taizhou died suddenly, several of these friends had already passed away, including the famous General Wang Shengi, while others, like Shi Xuzin, had been stripped of their military power. However, Emperor Taizong still had two loyal generals under his command, Li Jizun and Yang Xin. After ascending to the throne, Emperor Taizong first dismissed Li Jizun from his position as the commander of Beidou, and a month later, Li Jizun died under suspicious circumstances. Then Emperor Taizong paid a visit to Yang Xin's home, and the next day, Yang Xin was also found dead. Later, Emperor Taizong forced Zhao De Zhao, the son of Emperor Taizhou, to commit suicide. In 981, Emperor Taizhou's second son, Zhao Defong, died in a strange illness that resembled Emperor Taizhou's death. Another brother of Emperor Taizhou, Zhao Tingmei, was also exiled and died. As a result, all those who posed a threat to Emperor Taizong's claim to the throne were systematically eliminated. It seems that Emperor Taizong was determined to secure his power, no matter what the cost. It seems that the deaths of these individuals were not just coincidences, but rather a pattern of calculated moves by Emperor Taizong to eliminate anyone who could challenge his rule. Have you heard of the Golden Shelf Promise? It's a famous historical document that supposedly recorded the dying wish of Empress Dowager Du, the mother of Emperor Taizhou, Emperor Taizong, and Zhao Tingmei. According to legend, Empress Dowager Du summoned her trusted advisor, Zhao Pu, to record her final words. She instructed Emperor Taizhou to pass the throne to Emperor Taizong instead of Emperor Taizhou's sons and to keep her words a secret. 
to ensure that her wishes were carried out, she had the document written on a piece of paper and sealed in a golden shelf, hence the name Golden Shelf Promise. But here's the catch. Historians now believe that the Golden Shelf Promise was a complete fabrication. When Empress Dowager Du was on her deathbed in 961, she allegedly asked Emperor Taijo why he was able to become emperor. He replied that it was because of his parents' protection. However, Empress Dowager Du corrected him, saying that it was because the emperor of the later Zhu dynasty was too young to rule. She then urged him to pass the throne to his brother, Emperor Taizong, and to choose an experienced ruler to govern the country. While it's true that Empress Dowager Du may have expressed her preference for Emperor Taizong, there is no evidence to support the existence of a written pact. In fact, the Golden Shelf promise only became known during the reign of Emperor Taizong. It was then used to legitimize his claim to the throne and to justify his brother's decision to pass the throne to him instead of Emperor Taizhou's sons. However, many historians now believe that the pact was a forgery created by Zhao Pu to strengthen Emperor Taizong's rule. Moreover, Empress Dowager Du's supposed request to pass the throne to Emperor Taizong is also questionable. At the time of her death, Emperor Taizhou's son, Zhao Dejiao was already in his teens and was not too young to rule. It's unlikely that Empress Dowager Du would have made such a request. The Golden Shelf Promise is a fascinating historical story, but it's likely a fabrication. The supposed document has never been found, and there's no concrete evidence to support its existence. It's possible that it was created to serve as political propaganda and to legitimize Emperor Taizong's reign. And that's a wrap. We've explored the evidence and theories surrounding the question of whether Emperor Taizong was responsible for his brother's death. But now I want to hear from you. Do you think Taizong was involved in Emperor Taizhou's death, or was it simply a case of natural causes? Let me know in the comments below, and don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. Your support and feedback are what keep me motivated to create more content on Chinese history, culture, and artifacts. And if you have any suggestions for future videos, let me know. Thanks for watching.